Hello, Mrs. Teru. Hi, this is Matheson. Today we are going to kind of geek out over English language arts. I'm a former ELA teacher, um, and there are a lot of questions about what English class do we take? It's kind of a big question. And so you and I were chatting and we're like, let's shoot a quick video to kind of explain what's going on in ELA and what classes should kids take and that kind of thing. So I think you had some questions for me. I had some questions for you. So I did. Students come to me all the time with questions that I can't answer. So this is our chance to answer those. Um, the first one that people ask me a lot uh, when they're trying to decide between dash two and dash one uh, is what happens if I take dash two? Can I can I still go to university? Can I still go to college? Or am I closing that door by taking the dash two? That's a really good question. So there's two answers to that question. So the first answer is if, if you take dash two and you stay in dash two, like forever and ever, um, there are only certain programs you can get into. So those would be colleges. So schools like um, McEwen, McEwen has college, like diploma programs, Nate, um, Northwest, places like that. Um, those those schools that offer what's called a diploma generally are going to take that dash to English. And I mean, you can kind of probably explain what dash to English is about um, even better than I can. But my understanding is that, you know, dash two is going to prepare you for maybe some more of those practical skills that you're going to learn at a college type program. But it really just depends. So if you were doing a college program in communications, they might require dash one. So it's really important that students are in conversation with me and looking at post-secondary websites to get an idea of um, of what the requirements are. But oftentimes as you go into high school, you might at least have an idea of kind of whether or not you see yourself going to university or not. And that could um, help frame that decision. Okay, but, that's just, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, then what happens if I'm like at around a 50% and like 30-1? Uh, yeah. I know my 50% is not gonna get me into the program that I want. Uh, can I take 30-2 in the first semester say, and then take 30-1 to really make my 30-1 mark count more? Is that an option for me? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So some students like maybe are in dash two, and they do it in grade 10, 11, and 12. And they do that 30 dash two. And then after you do your 30 dash two, you can actually then take 30 dash one. So that's a really nice option for students, especially if then you decide in grade 12, actually, I do want to go to university, which that happens all the time. There's that option. And same thing if let's say you take 20 dash one, and you found it really challenging. And you feel like you'd benefit from kind of more practice, then yeah, you could take that 30 dash two, take all those skills and that 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 you learned in that class and then take that 30 dash one. And it's true, like if you have 50 and 30 dash one, and if the university is looking at that dash one mark, um, you, you know, that could really affect your ability to be admitted to that school anyway. So it's something to think about, like, what's the point of taking a class if I'm actually if I'm not going to have competitive marks for that? So it just really kind of, again, depends on like your future goals. But definitely if you're in dash two, it doesn't mean you can't eventually upgrade to dash one. You can do that in your grade 12 year after you've taken dash two or some students choose to do it another route. Um, we had one student recently do their dash two in summer school and then um, and then they were uh, ready to do their dash one in their grade 12 year. So just took some planning on their part on their part. Okay, that really clarifies it. Um, I know students have questions for you about the different programs too. I don't if you want to ask me, I can maybe clarify some of those. Yeah. So, okay. So what would be the main difference between the dash two and the dash one? Like what's different about the curriculum, the expectations, the writing? Why would I take one over the other? Um, that's a great question. The dash two program, uh, I think sometimes people sort of misunderstand what it is about. Um, it's not just easier than dash one, although in some senses it is, uh, it's different than dash one. So dash two, uh, is we look at different texts. We look at texts that are more sort of contemporary and relevant to students' immediate lives and what they want to do. Um, in the Dash 1, I'm assuming students are going to university. So I'm teaching and planning my course around what do you need to know in to do well in the diploma, but also what do you need to know to do well in an academic university class. In the Dash 2, I'm thinking I'm dealing with people who are going into business and to trades and to um, real life scenarios. Scenarios. And so the texts I'm picking are going to be more texts that deal with um, issues and, and complexities and problems um, that people are going to face in, in the workforce or in th their own business or those kinds of things, as opposed to how to write a research essay um, 
so, so we look at really different kinds of texts as well as we write different kinds of texts uh, in those two classes. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's good to know. Absolutely. Um, and there's still really like a high standard of writing in both courses. So it's definitely, not it's just a different kind of writing. We're writing for different purposes and for different goals. Yeah. And that would kind of go back to the making sure you've done some career planning because, you know, you mentioned business and it's really interesting because you can take business at Nate, a two year program where you could use your dash two English or you could take business at U of A where not only do you need dash one English, but you need dash one math where at Nate you wouldn't even need dash one math. So it's just so you really just have to know what schools you're interested in and and do, your, do you foresee yourself doing um, do you foresee yourself doing like post-secondary in the kind of that university setting for for four years. Right. Uh, and then I guess the third moving piece is the honors class. And that's the one I get questions about the, the most. Uh, why would I take honors and not dash one? So I'm going to take this chance to talk about that a little bit too. Absolutely. Okay. I, I want to hear this too, because I, right. I, I think there's been a lot of confusion. I hope I'm answering around, it correctly. <laughs> When honors is its own class, um, and we hope that that will be the case again. Um, what does that, why, why would I do that? Um, is it harder and will I get more um, graded harder? Will, will it be more difficult? Am I disadvantaged? Um, and so I want to say no. I teach, I, I assess exactly the same way, whether I'm teaching dash one or honors, uh, you will get exactly the same grade. The only thing that's different is the same difference between dash two and dash one. We do different texts. Um, and I pick texts not because they're harder. Um, I pick texts that are um, more complex in, in interesting ways. So honors is not for smart people necessarily. And it's not for people who get high 90s in English. It's for people who really love texts, who just want to come and geek out about the movie they saw last night or the novel that they're reading during math class. Um, and they really want to talk about it. Um, so Honors is a lot more talking. Um, we spend a lot of time really going deep uh, into all of the nerdy little routes that we want to go in, uh, and we look at texts that really allow us to do that. So really, honors is just people who love English, uh, who like think about these things outside of class uh, and who want a place to go and talk about that with other people who love it. Um, so it has nothing to do with marks people tend to do better on the diploma coming out of honors in my experience, but I think that's just because that complexity of discussion and thought and like loving texts translates to better marks on the diploma. That would be the only reason I can think of. Okay, sounds cool. Well, when I was in high school, I knew I wanted to be an English teacher. So I totally would have taken honors English. That sounds really fun. I didn't have that option in high school. So that was, that sounds really cool. Um, so yeah, I think we, I think we maybe answer all the questions. Do you feel like we answered them all or? Yeah, I think sometimes people want to know, like, is there any outside benefit to honors? Is it going to go on my transcript yeah. or, yeah. right? Is it like AP or IB? And, and no, it really doesn't. You're there because you wanted to read Frankenstein with a bunch of other people who wanted to read Frankenstein in grade 12. Or you wanted to listen to a philosopher talk about existentialism for 80 minutes. Or you wanted to go and like, it's just for people who want a little extra. You want to be, that's the only difference. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And it, it sounds like a great option for those students who want to be perhaps challenged in that way, or yeah, just find that really um, interesting and exciting for, for themselves. Uh, it sounds like a really, a really good option. I, I think my, you know, I would, you know, let students know, like, if you have any questions about dash one, dash two, or dash one honors, definitely make sure you make an appointment with me and chat with me because I can kind of go through some of those post-secondary implications. Some of them I have memorized, some of them I don't, just kind of depends. And so we can kind of chat about which which course would be would best suit kind of um, in preparing you for what your post-secondary plans are. Great, thanks for your support and help, Mrs. Yeah, absolutely.